What's up everybody, Ricky Carruth here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I wanna to go through my four question sales script. Okay, with everything crazy going on in the world right now, I wanna give you this script so you can get out there, feel comfortable about approaching prospects and our intentions to actually help them. And this will help you build your business and take your sales to a completely different level. I also want to link a video below. It's my actual earnings as a real estate agent. This is something I did about a year ago. However, it really breaks down my numbers, okay, and gives you a little bit of credibility for myself that I know exactly what I'm talking about, that I've been there, that I've done that. Everything that I'm teaching you in all my videos is through trial and error. It's things I wish I would have known when I started sales or even 10 years into sales. I've been through anything you can imagine. It's been an incredible journey and a complete roller coaster. Imagine this, imagine getting into sales at 20 years old, making a million dollars by the time you're 23, okay, and then getting kicked back down to the bottom, okay, losing everything, going back to roofing houses, sleeping in my car, going bankrupt, and getting a job on an oil rig, okay, only to read 100 books and get back in the business because I realized exactly what I did wrong from day one. What I did wrong from day one was I was focused on the deals. I was focused on the money, the closings, trying to get people to do deals. I was not focused on the actual person, okay? The human being, okay, who needed help through the process. I was not concerned with trying to create relationships short and long term. I wasn't concerned with trying to make a good impression so that we can get tons of referrals later. Okay, I wasn't concerned with any of this, and this is literally why I lost everything, and my biggest mistake as a, as a young salesman. So as I got back in the business and I worked my way back up to the top, okay, I had to start focusing on relationships. I had to build my foundation on people, not deals and money, okay? And there within, I built a strong, okay, a super strong database full of people who know me, like me, and trust me at the highest level and will be loyal for the rest of their life and send me all the referrals in the world that they can possibly send me. This is the kind of business that I have, this is the kind of business that you want, and this is the kind of business that I want to teach you to build. So through trial and error, okay, of making over 100,000 cold calls, Okay, I made over 100,000 cold calls in my career. I haven't made a cold call in the last four years, but up to that point, I made 100,000 to build my business, to get it where I wanted it to be. And through all the trial and error of going through that process, I developed this four question sales script. And if you haven't seen it already, I'll link another video below. It's everything that I learned from making those 100,000 calls. It's an incredible video. You're gonna get a lot of value out of that one as well. So I have two videos linked below. It's my actual earnings as a real estate agent and everything I learned from making 100,000 cold calls. Now let's get into this four question sales script, okay? Question number one is, how are you doing, <laughs> okay? This is the magic question, this is the most basic, this is so simple, okay? It's right there in front of you, it's a question everybody knows, okay? But nobody really knows how to use it and how important it is in the conversation, okay? So here's how the conversation should start. Hey, Mr. Johnson, you know, you, you, you try to figure out who we're talking to, make sure we're talking to the right person. Okay, Mr. Johnson, hey, Mr. Johnson, it's Ricky Carruth down here at EXP Realty. How you doing today? Okay, there it is right there. Okay, every question that we ask, we wanna stop, allow them to respond, okay? Pause, give them a moment, let them respond and listen. You need to use the 80-20 rule when you're talking to prospects. Okay, when you're on a sales call, okay, 80-20, you should talk 20% of the time and listen 80% of the time, or let them talk 80% of the time. Most salespeople, or a lot of salespeople, they talk 80% of the time of the conversation, right, and allow the prospect to only talk 20% of the time. Okay, this is an imbalance and a very bad one, 
okay? And a lot of salespeople talk their self out of the deal. Okay, you don't wanna do that. You wanna talk less and listen more. And let me break it down even further. Out of the 20% that you're talking, 80% of that should be of you asking questions. Okay, so most of the time that you're talking should be you asking questions, looking for a response, not you rambling on, not you telling all this and all that. Okay, we need to be asking questions and letting them respond and listening. Okay, and that's going to prompt our next question. So our second question, the four, is going to be kind of ad lib. Okay, it's going to kind of be spur of the moment. All right, what I like my go-to here is after I ask them how they're doing, and then they tell me, I say, oh, good, me too. I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay, so most of the time when you say how you doing, they're gonna say good. If they say not good, we're gonna say, oh man, I hate to hear that, and we're gonna go straight to the third question. Okay, but as far as the second question is concerned, my go-to is, I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Right, me too, I'm doing good too. I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? So I'm talking about the weather. Okay, and everyone can relate to the weather. A lot of times I get into these conversations and this part of the call ends up lasting several minutes because we start talking about the weather. Okay, they wanna know about the weather, they talk about the weather, they predict the weather, you know, so on and so forth. But it doesn't have to be about the weather. Let's make that clear. The second question does not have to be about the weather. Okay, a lot of people get stumped right here. They say, oh, Ricky, the weather part of the call feels so unnatural. Okay, and I just can't seem to get myself to do it. But this question, the second question, is one of the most important questions because why? We're not diving right into a sales question. We're not diving right into the, the, the meat of the, the sales part of this call. Okay, we're giving them a second to kind of ease into it and it breaks the tension. Okay, a lot of people want to skip over this part because they feel like there's tension. They feel like, you know, the, the prospect doesn't want to be on the call. And so they go right to the sales part because they feel like that small talk is really going to, you know, make them even more annoyed that we're calling them, which is completely false. Right? If your prospect is feeling tense, if your prospect is feeling annoyed, this is the moment that we use a second question to break that tension. It's so important and you really need to try it. Be confident. It's not really what you say, it's how you say it and how confident you are and what your intentions really are. So this second question could be anything. It could be, are you getting ready for Christmas? You know, how was your New Year's? How was your Thanksgiving? Okay, it could be something to do with holidays. It could be something to do with something going on in the world. As the pandemic was happening, I was saying, hey, it's crazy out there. How are you guys doing through this? Okay, the way I like to structure the second question is I'm gonna say a statement, a very short statement followed up by a very short question. Okay, man, it's been crazy out there. How are you guys doing through this? Okay, I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? A statement and then a question, all extremely short. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, short questions, pause, wait for reaction, listen. The second question is so important, okay, to stick it in there because it, it, it makes it a real conversation. A conversation is two people who are going back and forth. Ask a question, get a response, ask a question, get a response. That's a conversation back and forth. It doesn't need to be a one-sided conversation. We don't need to go straight into the sales part of the call because this is what's gonna open them up and allow them to, to begin the trusting process of feeling comfortable our number one goal with sales calls. Number one, above everything, even above making the sale and everything else, is to make them feel comfortable with us. If they don't feel comfortable with us, there's not gonna be any more to the call. There's not gonna be any more you know, parts of the call. We're not gonna get to the sale. We're not gonna get to the questions, nothing. If, we don't, if they don't feel comfortable with us within those first couple seconds, Okay? and then continue to feel comfortable with us through the conversation, we're done right there. The third question, okay, the third question is the magic question. Okay, this is the one that really brings it and it ties everything together. Here it is. What in the world can I do for you? Okay, it's not about what they can do for me. It's not about them doing a transaction so that I can make a commission. 
It's about what can I do for you? I don't even care if you want to do a sale or not. I don't even care if you want to take action or move forward. I just want to know what I can do for you. I don't care what I can't do for you. I don't care if you don't want to do a sale. I don't care if you don't want to do this or don't want to do that. I want to know what I can do to help you, not what I can't do. So this is how I, I lead into the question of what in the world can I do for you? Okay, as soon as we're done with that second question, the answer to the second question, let's just say, for example, you say, yeah, I'm doing good too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? You know, or I could say, yeah, I'm doing good too. It's raining cats and dogs out there. Are you staying dry? Or it's nasty out there. Are you staying dry? Whatever the case may be, it's something that rolls off your tongue. You may tweak what that second question is through your call session. You may get through 20 calls and then switch that second question up. And then the next 20 calls have much better results because you, you found something that was more comfortable or that was working better as far as how, how you are you know, presenting it. Right, so so think about that as you as you're going through your call sessions. You can tweak your call sessions and in your script as you go along. But let's say I go with, you know, I'm doing good too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? And they say, Yeah, it is doing doing really good outside. Uh, what can I do for you? You say, I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but then give the reason for your call in terms of what you're calling about. If it's real estate, you're talking about, hey, a house around the corner just sold, or I just listed a house around the corner, right? If you're selling, if, if you're selling cell phones or something like that, you say, oh, we're, we have this really good deal on cell phones today, okay? I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you, okay? So let me repeat, let me go right, right through it. As a real estate agent, Okay, I'm gonna say, I gotcha. Well look, I don't wanna take up too much of your time today, but a house around the corner just sold from you and I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. Bam, again, pause, listen. <laughs> pause, give them a chance to respond, see what they say, and listen, listen to the response, listen to the tone of their voice, listen to the speed of their voice. Okay, you can read a lot into much higher than what they're saying if you really listen, okay, the speed, the hesitation, the tone, everything matters. So this question, what in the world can I do for you, is the magic question. Okay, this can be used across any platform. You can use this through digital, you can use this through email, you can use this, you know, through direct mail, you can use this, you know, voice to voice. This is the magic question because we really want to put intentions behind our voice and our tone when we're asking this question because this is the one that is going to hopefully help them realize that we are here for them, not us. We're not asking them if they want to buy something. We're not asking them if they want to sell something. Okay, We're not trying to get them to do anything. We just want to know what we can do to help. And this is what's going to take your business to another level. And the fourth question, the fourth question of this four question script is, okay, would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? Okay, would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? Okay, this is the icing on the cake. Okay, this is the whipped cream on top. Okay, this is how we actually capitalize on every situation regardless if we do a deal or not because when we grab that contact information, we can then begin the process of going further and deeper with that relationship through a personal brand. And this is going to be the glue that holds everything together. So this is how I'll lead into it. When I ask them if there's anything that I can do for them, anything in the world, okay, they may respond with, I don't know what they're going to respond with. They may respond with, yes, we're looking to do this, or no, we're not looking to do anything. Okay. Either way it goes, I want to find out if there's an agent that they would work with if they were to do something or if they are looking to do something. Okay, and then I want to ask them, you know, hey, look, I'm sure at some point you're going to do something, okay, in the future. I would love the opportunity to just work with you when that day comes. Would it be all right if I just stayed in touch with you? Okay, so you want to make this and really give this a personal feel that we just want to personally stay in touch with them. Okay, a, a problem and a mistake I see with a lot of salespeople is that when they're asking for the email address, they're asking for contact information, they're asking to stay in touch, they're exuding that 
they're gonna be sending them a market report or that they wanna send them some information or something of that nature. And the consumer and the prospect is thinking, I already get way too much information. I don't really want any more information. I'm kind of information overload. I get plenty of emails, I get plenty of stuff. Okay, I don't need any more, so thank you, but no thank you. However, if you approach it like you just want to stay in touch with them, okay? You just want to stay in touch with them on that personal level, then that's a completely different ball game, okay? And that's going to give you a much, much better opportunity to grab that contact information. Let's say we are selling cell phones. Okay, is there anything in the world I can do for you? They're like, what? Well, in terms of maybe buying, buying a new phone or upgrading or anything of that nature, no, we're okay, okay, cool. Well, look, I'm sure at some point in the future, you're gonna need a new cell phone. I would love the opportunity to stay in touch with you for, you know, so I can work with you when that day comes. Would it be all right if I stayed in touch? Now, let's say you are selling cell phones. Okay, and you say, hey, you know, we got a good deal on cell phones today. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I can do for you. And they're like, like what? You know, what, what can you do for me? I don't know. I don't know if you're looking to maybe upgrade your cell phone soon or looking to buy a new cell phone or whatnot. And they're like, no, I'm good. Okay, great. I'm sure at some point in the future, you know, you will eventually want to upgrade or buy a new cell phone. I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? Bam. Okay, we're not, we haven't asked for anything yet. We haven't asked for any email addresses or personal contact information yet. We're just asking for permission to stay in touch with them. Simply just stay in touch with them. And of course, if you made it this far in the conversation, your tone is right and your intentions are right, you're, you're going to be in a place where they feel semi-comfortable with you, even though this is the first call, the first time you're ever talking. Okay, that's the power of this. So once they commit to saying it's okay if, I, if you stay in touch with them, that's when you say, okay, great, what's a good email address? Is this your cell number? And you make sure you have all their contact information right there in your database so that from that point further, they can begin to receive a weekly email from you for the rest of their life. I do mine every Wednesday since 2007. It's literally the reason why I'm able to sell 100 properties a year every year since 2014 without a cold call in the last four years. The weekly email, I built my database around the weekly email. I built my foundation okay, of my business through the weekly email, my personal brand. Okay, and this is what has catapulted me above the competition. For real estate agents, I believe a weekly email is the perfect frequency. If you're doing anything less, I feel like it's not frequent enough. I feel like it's not consistent enough. I feel like they're, you know, it's 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 losing its its luster. Okay, if it's anything less than a week for other businesses, maybe by week by uh, monthly, maybe monthly. Okay, depending on what business you're in. However, a consistent email. Okay, that they can expect at the same time, every time, the same frequency, okay, is a must. Emails have the highest organic reach out of all platforms, except for text messaging, and text messaging is on its way up. It's not there yet, okay, and several businesses have begun to use text messaging and mass texting in their, in their business. I use it myself, but it's, it hasn't went mainstream yet. If you need help with content for your weekly email, I'm gonna link a third video below about how to structure your email all four weeks of the month. Okay, that's really gonna help you. It's gonna simplify everything and kind of give you a, a direction to start in. Okay guys, that's the four question script. Let me go through them really quickly. It's gonna be, how are you doing today? I'm enjoying the days and it's gorgeous. What in the world can I do for you? And would it be all right if I stayed in touch? If you would, shoot me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Click the like button on your way out to go see those other videos I posted below. Let me know what questions I can answer for you and what videos you want me to make next. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Let's go.